her with this lovely name. Hey, bless her with this lovely name. too busy for a powwow. Busy? <laughs> All I got on my mind is a vacation. Sure, but you're a big shot now. I thought maybe... Let's forget that big shot stuff. You know, you made me a member of this tribe before I ever saw a microphone. I'm still a hometown boy, and I like it here. Gosh, Roy, look. Somebody must be in an awful hurry. We better get those horses out of the way. that on purpose. Anybody you know, Chief? No, but she could be Princess Splashing Water. Could be. She dropped her headdress. Maybe I'd better go have a talk with her. Wait just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> what would a woman like that want with a dry hat anyway? <laughs> I'll go find out. <laughs> deliberately plowing through that creek back there and splicing all that. I didn't see the water. Besides, what were you all standing around there for anyway? We always stand there waiting for nice, thoughtful, considerate girls to pass by. Look, I'm sorry. I got splashed myself, see, and look at my car and... My hat. My hat, it's gone! No, it isn't. Oh, that's horrible. It's not too bad. All hats look funny nowadays. You just got to get used to it. I thought men in the West were supposed to be gentlemen. That just goes to show you how long you can be. You're not going to leave me here like this with my car broken down, are you? It's not broken. Your distributor got wet when you hit that creek. Well, what'll I do? Just wait till it dries. Nice, friendly Western type, aren't you? Of course, you can blow on the wires and make it get dry a little faster. I can? Mm-hmm. Thank you. Now, I don't rush me, Dan. It ain't ready yet. You only gave it to me yesterday. Besides, that's a mighty sick watch. I ain't no miracle, man. It isn't about my watch, Gabby. Well, it might be a week before I get him back on his feet. Poor little feller. He's so run down, he ain't got no life left in him. 
Beneath your watch, what is it? Craig wants to see you in his office. It's the sheriff's job. All I've done since that dog born sheriff took sick is waste my time sheriff around. I got my own business tend to. What do you want? Come on, he'll tell you. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Got to do this right. Let me see now. Answer the call from Tom Craig at, uh, at, uh, exactly quarter past. Well, okay, but let's get over there before it's half past. Yeah. Hmm. Mr. Craig does not take care of the buying. Mr. Adams is the manager, and he's the gentleman you wish to talk to. Yes, here he comes now. Mr. Adams. You know something, Dan? Hello. You ain't got the proper respect for timepieces. Just, just a moment. Most important invention in history. Yes, yes. Without him, we never get any place. Just a moment. We did get there, we'd probably be late. That's right. Yeah. You know, where, where's Tom? He's in the office. Yeah, thank you. Hello. Yes. What's on your mind, Tom? Come in, Gabby. And shut the door. Notice any strangers in town the last few days, Gabby? Oh, as if I didn't have nothing else to do. Of course there's strangers in town. All there is. Special now, the Indians are putting on their powwow. I know. I mean anybody suspicious. Nobody but you and me. <laughs> I'm serious, Gabby. Take a look at that safe. Like somebody tried to crack it. Thomas Craig, proprietor. Hey, if you see anybody in town that doesn't look right to you, let me know, will you? Don't you worry, now. If I see any crooks around here, I can take care of them myself. Yes, I know, but I might be able to help if you tip me off. Now, come in. Tom, there's a young lady here to see you. Oh, send her in. Uh, how do you do? You don't recognize me, do you, Mr. Craig? I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I don't. I'm Helen Williams. Not Jim Williams' daughter. That's right. It's been a long time. I haven't seen you since... <laughs> since I was in that awful brat stage. <laughs> well, you were never quite there. Oh, excuse me. Oh, Miss Williams. Gabby Whitaker. How do you do, Miss Williams? How do you do, Mr. Whitaker? Sit down. Thank you. Helen's father and I were very old friends. Oh? That's really the reason I'm here. Dad said if I ever needed any help, I could count on you. I'll do everything I can, naturally. Mr. Craig, I want a job. I'm a singer. A singer? <laughs> well, that seems a pretty simple request. Well, it isn't even a question of salary. You can just pay me what you think I'm worth. My guess when I hear you talk is that your voice is as mellow as the chimes of an old French clock. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> well, we'll hear your voice tonight. You can try out at the first show. Oh, thank you, Mr. Craig. I hope I surprise you. You'll be all right. Then? Fix Miss Williams up at the room. Her father and I were very dear friends. Surely. Well, thank you so much. Oh, not at all. Now, you run along with Dan, and I'll see you tonight. Goodbye. Goodbye. Take good care of her, Dan. I will. I don't know why I ever let you talk me into this. If this girl had a voice, she wouldn't be asking for a job at the trading post. Eh? Yeah. You just wait and you'll see her. One look at her is enough. Besides, Tom wants to have a little talk with you. I think we better get over there. Mm -hmm. How in the world do you ever stand this every hour on me off? Roy, that's the sweetest music in the world. <laughs> All on time, too. Hear anything yet? Not yet, Jake. And don't mention that around here. Of course not. Hello, boys. Hello, Hi, Dan. Man. Is Tom in his office? Yes, he is, Roy. He's expecting you. Thanks. Sit down, Gabby. I'll go see what's on Tom's mind. 
So she's really got a voice. Man alive, perfect. I just got through rehearsing her number. The thing that kills me is what Roy is going to say when he sees her. That she's the girl that... She's... Hi, Roy. Oh, I'll see you later, Tom. Say, Tom, what is all this? What happened this afternoon? Uh, sit down, Roy. I want to talk to you. I've got a hunch that I'm in for some trouble, Roy. What makes you think that, Tom? I've made some enemies in my time, Roy. Every man does. But I came to Bear Valley in the hope of throwing them off my trail. But I've got a hunch they know where I am. What kind of enemies? Well, it's no good going over the whole story now, Roy. If anything happens to me, I want you to look after my affairs. What kind of talk is this, Tom? There's nothing going to happen to you. I wish I was sure about that. This is my will. I've made you executor of my estate, if it's all right with you. All right, Tom, if it'll make you feel any better. A whole lot better. I think you just got the jitters. Why don't you come on out and visit with the customers? Well, I have a little work to do here first. I'll be out later on. All right. I'll be out there with Gabby. Hurry on out, will you? All right. All right, boys, it's time we were on. Hey, hey. No cracks now. Oh, Roy, you're just in time to hear our new canary. What's she like? Oh, What's she oh, like? Oh, oh, terrific. She, Roy? What did I tell you? Not only has she got everything it takes, but she's one of the sweetest, nicest girls you've ever met. This wonder girl is something I've got to see. Oh, to see her is to love her. Oh, well, there she is now. Good luck. Our best, Miss Williams. Thank you. Princess Splashing Water. Oh, Miss Williams. Mm-hmm. Miss Williams, I'd like you to meet Roy Rogers. Roy Rogers? The one and only. No radio program complete without him. Pleased to meet you, Miss Williams. This time. So you, you know each other? Slightly, Mr. Whitaker. Only slightly. And not favorably. Too bad, too. From what the boys tell me, I gather you sing much better than you drive a car. And your singing is certainly an improvement on your manners. Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, shall we just call this a draw and get on with the show? Hmm? <laughs> well, good luck anyway, Miss Williams. Thank you. Attention, ladies and gentlemen. Our new singing star, Miss Helen Williams. An old, old lady from New York town goes to see a Western movie every day. And though her knowledge of the West is zero, still she wrote her favorite cowboy hero. And here's exactly what she had to say. I want to go west, young man. I want to go west, young man. I want to see the deer out in Buffalo. Those trail herding cowboys with legs that bow. Just let me listen to saddle horns blow. I want to go west. I want to go west, young man. I want to see the smoke when a five-gun shoot. To meet all the rangers in fur pants suits. I want to see men in platform boots. I want to go west. Oh, let it's me all right, sir. With my little doggie barking at my side. Just let me see. I'll pack the tree, a little and I'm dying to cross the great divide. Now, I want to go west, young man. I want to go with my old last too. To ride in Chuck's wagon with him there, too. Just let me live like the rustlers do. I want to go west, oh, I I want to go west, young man. I want to play guitar with a range quartet to ride across the desert when the sun is set. I want to eat where Larry ate. I want to go west, young man. I want to go west. Nice to see you again, Tom. You're wasting your time here, Courtney. Oh, that's too bad after all the trouble we've taken to find you. I haven't got it, but I don't know where it is. Oh, I don't doubt your word for a minute. It's very easy to mislay an unimportant trinket like that. It was stolen from me. Oh, what a shame. We're sorry to hear that, aren't we, Alberti? I have a lot of friends in Bear Valley, and the sheriff is one of them. Have you told the sheriff about Jim Williams? Oh, you happen to come here in retirement? <laughs> sure, he tell everything. <laughs> I told you I haven't got the thing. 
If you can't find it, remember I'm awfully good at stimulating people's memory. Waiter. Mr. Craig will take care of my check. Good night, Tom. Hey, you go on again an hour. That's right. Well, Miss Williams, a while ago I wished you luck. I take it back now. With a voice like yours, you don't need it. Oh, you're going to be nice for a change, huh? Thank you. Oh, you were fine, Miss Williams. It's a break for the trading post having you with us. Thank you, Mr. Adams. They all like you. going through the safe and he... He's gone, Dan. It was self-defense. He'd have... It, it was straight self-defense. Of course it was. He's probably the same one busted in here early today. Have a look at him, Tom. You know him? I never saw him before. You say he was going through the safe when you came in? That's right. And apparently it wasn't after just money. There ain't nothing on him. No papers, nothing to identify him. You sure you never saw him before, Tom? I, I'm positive. When you fellas call Dr. Bradley, I had to make up and report. Let me see now. The shooting occurred about, uh... Hello. Uh, give me the coroner's office, please. About, uh... You're fast. And... Found... The... Corpus... Hey, Roy, how do you spell corpus delicti? Forget about that for a minute, Gabby. I think we ought to ride out to Tom's place and have a talk with him right now. Why? He don't know who the fellow was. He knows a lot more than he's told us. He's holding something back, Gabby. Tom's in some serious trouble, and if we're to help him, he's got to tell us what it is. Well, that's why he's been acting so queer lately, huh? You're right, son. You better have a little talk with him. How have you been? What are you doing here? I'll give you three guesses. One ought to do it. You know what I want. Make it snappy. Well, I... Don't try to stall me. Now get it. All right. It's over here. Did you hear something, Gabby? Sounds like shoot. Anybody live around here except uh, Tom Craig? No. Come on. Oh. Oh. Now listen, Craig. Well, Tom must be here. There's a station wagon. Yeah.
Tom. He did. His hunch wasn't a pipe dream after all. Too bad he didn't get a chance to tell me who was after him and what they wanted. Whoever shot him must have escaped through this window. Stay away from that window, Gabby. You want to get shot? Oh, I wasn't thinking. Maybe we can get some help out of Tom's will. Looks like a lot of legal palaver. He wants me to sell his trading post and his ranch and send the money to his sister in Illinois. This is funny. He wants me to burn all of his personal effects. Burn them? Let me see that. Why do you think he made this request about burning his thing? Well, probably somewhere in his files there's a reference to this thing his enemies are after. That'd be my guess. But whatever it is, it isn't money. What are they after? I don't know. But the idea makes sense. He wanted his sister to have the money. Whatever this other thing is, it's just too hot for her to handle. Yeah. Hey, we're doing all right, boy. <laughs> That wasn't our horses. Come from our back. Come from back here someplace. Look. Can't catch no car. No, but we can still get to the main road before it does. Out of the car. Come on, get out. Are you doubling as a hold up man, Mr. Rogers? Hold up, man. I'm a sheriff. Uh, right now, anyhow. Just what were you doing at the Craig Ranch? I wasn't at the Craig Ranch. No? No. You better lock her up, Sheriff, until she's ready to talk. Lock me up? On what charge? Nothing serious. Just the murder of Tom Craig. Murder? Tom Craig? Why did you do it? I didn't do it. I was just there looking around. Looking around? For what? For something that Tom Craig stole from my father. Stole? Yes. Tom Craig never stole nothing from nobody. Hold it, Gabby. Just what did Tom steal from your father? It was a crest, a family heirloom set with emeralds. There's something inside that crest that my father said would cause a lot of destruction. How could something inside of a little piece of jewelry... Are you trying to tell us that you don't know what it actually is or was? My father didn't tell me about it until he was dying, and then he never finished. All I know is that he asked me to get that crest from Tom Craig and turn it over to the government. That would explain why Tom was so worried. Are you willing to back up your story by sticking with us until we get to the bottom of this? Of course I am. That's why I'm here. All right. You and I will go back to the Craig Ranch and see if we can find the crest. We'll use your horse, Gabby. Well, what'll I do? Fix the flat tire. You know how to use tools. Gabby. 
Find anything? No, we've searched the place from top to bottom. Mr. Craig must have had some very special hiding place. Maybe the fellow that killed him got away with the crash. Well, I don't think so. We were here right after the shots were fired. There wasn't any sign of anybody ransacking the place. I phoned the coroner. Good evening. Got you here on a pretty grim errand, Dell. Tom Craig. You better drive back to town. I'll keep you out of this as much as I can. Better try to get some sleep. I wish it were that easy. Did you tell LeBlanc to pick up my magazine? I don't like LeBlanc. I never talked to him. Check. Well, the news ain't good. Craig said, Marty. Why, he couldn't be. He wasn't that badly hurt. He was plenty alive when I left the place. Are you sure he's dead? I hung around town listening to all the talk I could. Craig's lying in the morgue. And that's fine. Killing the one man in the world who knew where the crest is. Another thing. That part-time sheriff ain't nothing to worry about, but Rogers is his pal, and he's working with him. Rogers is the guy we gotta look out for, and that Williams dame. Williams? She's singing at the trading post. Jim Williams had a daughter. That must have been the girl you saw at Craig's last night, Marty. All I know is I saw a girl sneaking around the house. She's dangerous. She'll be after the crest, too. Besides, she'll give the sheriff a lot of information. I think we can get along a lot better without Mr. Rogers and Miss Williams, Marty. And I'm elected. That's right, you're elected. And I could get along much better without you. I can't make it a threesome, can I, boss? I'll get you one of these days, Marty. Break it up, boys. Get out of here. Your move. We heard a horse when he... I went through everything at Craig's office. I couldn't find anything. I'm making out my report about that horse that went in last night. You know, there must have been somebody else around. You're doing fine, Sherlock. Hi. Hi, Flying Eagle. About time you got started to the doings at our place, isn't it? Well, I don't know if I can make it or not. Gosh, Roy, you can't let the folks down. I know what happened, and you've got your hands full. But after all... As a this... matter of fact, there isn't a lot I can do around here. Sure, you go ahead. I'll handle this. We only hold these powwows once a year, and you know how they count on you. You sure you can handle it, Gabby? You're a darn tootin' I can. And then them murderers show up around here, I'll... I'll... Send for Roy. Yeah, sure. Send... Huh? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Roy, we're taking Helen along to the reservation. She uh, doesn't believe there's any wild Indians left around here. And uh, we can prove that there are, don't you think, Flying Eagle? We proved it to Easterners before. Well, that's what I'm getting at. How about it, Roy? All right, if you don't carry it too far. I'd better get started then. Right. Oh, do I ride up there or back in the back? I'm going to have to ride up in front. Oh, fine. That's All set? Great. Sure. Let's go. <clears throat> Don't tell me about those wild Indians we're likely to meet. The boys have given me enough of a build-up already. Don't let them kid you. All the Indians around here are tame. Tame as tigers. <laughs> Eat up! Here. So quiet and peaceful after last night. I thought you'd enjoy the change. Indians 
every once in a while they get sore about something and this happens. Yeah, and this happens. Cute kids playing cowboys and Indians at your age. You know the trouble with you? What? No imagination. No? Well, I can imagine landing down there on my ear with feathers all over me, and furthermore, that's what... <laughs> Some fun. Somebody was using live ammunition. None of my boys. We've got nothing but blanks. Oh, sure. You know that, Roy. Yeah, I know. Well, somebody must have taken some shots at us from up on those hills. Roy, do you suppose it was... I don't know who it was any more than I know who killed Tom Craig. Not much use looking for them now. I guess not. Well, let's fix those lines and get going, or we'll be late for the powwow. I'm lazy. I'm lazy. No city life for me, no service. I've found a paradise under Nevada sky. I'm happy, so happy. I'm feeling fancy free. Yes, sirree. And my reason lies under Nevada sky. I love the wind the blowing, the herd a lowing, a song or two beside a campfire gleam. I love the smell of bacon, coffee in the making. Take it from me. That's a cowboy's dream. Why worry? Why hurry? The only place to be. Yes, sirree. Is there before your eyes? Under Nevada. as if we'll have to make you a member of our tribe, too, Miss Williams. Thank you. It would be an honor. Just so long as the initiation ceremonies aren't anything like that ride I had to take this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> no. Hey, Roy. Gabby. Excuse me. Hiya, Gabby. Boy, have I got things to tell you. Well, first off, this is Mr. Courtney. Roy Rogers. Hello, Rogers. How are you? Hi, Mr. Courtney. He bought the ranch next to Craig's. Going to turn it into a big dude ranch. He came into town to report something he saw last night. Anything in connection with Craig's murder? Well, it's possible. Not very important, but last night about the time of the murder, from what I hear, I saw a couple of men riding from that direction go across my property. Did you know who they were? No, but they seemed greatly excited and aroused my suspicion. I thought the sheriff here ought to know about it. Well, it would help some if you could identify them. I think I could if I saw them again. I had a pretty good look at them. That ain't all. I saw the coroner's report. Craig didn't die of the shooting. What? No, sir. Says right in the report the bullet wounds couldn't have caused death. He was strangled after he was shot. Strangled? Yeah. Don't make sense to me. Why should anybody want to strangle a man if he had a gun? They wouldn't. There must be somebody else, Gabby. You mean there was two people after the crest? Looks like it to me. Somebody must have gotten in there and finished Tom off after he was shot. Say... Rogers, I think you've hit on it. That's obviously what happened. That's Exactly what I was thinking, only I didn't want to say nothing. Well, I better get my gang together. 
Thanks a lot, Mr. Courtney, for all your information. I'm sorry I couldn't have been of more help. If we get any suspects, we'll bring them in and let you have a look at them. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Smart observation that young man made. Yeah, couldn't have done much better myself. Well, here we are. Right to your doorstep. Thanks, Mr. Courtney. You sure done your duty to the citizen when you reported them fellas. Happy to help any time I can, sir. Good night. Good night. It looked like the evening was a success. Well, as far as the sheriff is concerned, we've nothing to worry about. There's somebody else beside us after that crest. You know, Marty didn't kill Craig. Who? No? Why not? I mean, who then? I don't know, but it's up to us to find out and find out quick. Hi, Dan. Oh, Roy. Some letters came for Tom this morning. I thought you ought to look at them. Fine. This one from some dog food company, an insurance company. Well, they won't do us any good. They all look like advertisements except that one. Hey, Dan. I have something. Did Tom ever mention to you anything about a friend of his named Herbert? Herbert? No. Listen to this. Dear Craig, the agents of the country you referred to are definitely interested in the Cavaco piece in your possession. If you can furnish proof, they're ready to talk business. Write me at the Washington address. I'm Herbert. Is that all? That's all, except that it's marked personal and is mailed in New York. Did Tom ever mention to you anything about the Cavaco piece? Makes no sense to me. Well, me either. Looks like he was dickering with some foreign country, and the Cavaco piece must be the crest. But what would a foreign country want with a piece of jewelry? Well, I don't know. I wonder how a nice guy like Tom ever got mixed up in a shady deal like this. I still can't believe it. Well, me either. Well, I'll keep this, and if anything else comes in, let me know. Right. We look in there, Gabby. You think you're looking at Jimmy? No, we didn't. Hmm. You young folks ain't so darn smart. You better mind those whiskers. Uh oh. Did you find something? Yeah. What is it? A brick. What's behind it? Another brick. Coming this way. Yeah, you better hide. Might be them. That looks very nice. Sing them up. All right, Sheriff. They're up. Oh, Mr. Courtney. <laughs> we saw you on the road as you were riding up. We thought we'd stop by and take a look at the place. Sure, sure. Why not? You know Miss Williams? How do you do, Miss Williams? How do you do? It's Mr. Courtney I was telling you about. He's helping us. This is my friend, Mr. Alberti. Uh, bonjour, mademoiselle. Monsieur, comment allez-vous? He's from out of town. <laughs> <laughs> Won't you gentlemen sit down? Thank you very much. Actually, I had an ulterior motive for coming here. You had what? Well, there's nothing sinister about it. I just thought if the place was for sale, I might like to buy it. Well, yes, Roy's figuring on selling it. That is, after we get a few things straightened up. Yes, of course. Well, you tell Mr. Rogers that I'm interested, but naturally, not until the mystery is cleared up, I wouldn't want to become involved. I don't blame you. Good place, though, to add to your ranch. Give you some extra room for the dudes to fall off their horses. <laughs> well, I hadn't thought of that, but it's a good selling point. You want I should show you around? No, not at the moment. Mr. Alberti here is my architect. I thought I'd have him take a look at the place to see what he could do with it in case I decided to buy. All right, all is glad to see you. In case you want to buy some clocks, you know where to find me. <laughs> All right, I'll get in touch with you. Excuse me, Miss Williams. Yes, sir. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Well, our visit has accomplished two purposes. I'm sure they haven't found it yet. 
And if we have occasion to return, we've established an excellent reason. Fine type of gentleman, Mr. Courtney. Hello? Oh, Roy. No, not a thing. But we can go into the real estate business anytime we want to. Real estate business? Yes. Yeah. Well, I couldn't sell it now anyway. Right. Now, could I talk to Gabby a minute? Hi, Roy. Yeah. Oh, you know Mr. Courtney's all right, Roy. Else why would you tell us about them mini saw? Well, I'm not saying it is Courtney. But I've got an idea how we can find out who is after that crest. I'm going to need your help, Gabby. Hurry back to town as soon as you can. Right. and a drum. Well, what's going on there? Give it a little music. Strike up the band, boy. Get hot. I didn't know he drank. He doesn't. At least he hasn't for years. Well, maybe Ben Sheriff's been too much for him. I wonder if he and Roy found out anything. I don't know. I hate you. <laughs> Dan, you better go over and keep an eye on Gabby. Yeah, I guess I'd better. Gabby, what happened to you? What business is there for yours? Well, I... Don't answer that. You're all right. I'm celebrating. What are you celebrating? Just come out of the world. I'll buy you a little drink. Reach for everybody in the house, Pete. It's my night now. That a boy, Gabby. Everybody drink. Yes, sir. Come on, boy. Me and Roy does it. You got what? Yeah, got what? Listen to him. Got what, he says. What do you think we got? The measles? We got that do to that. That's what we got. The one they killed poor old Tom Craig for. Oh, careful, Gabby, careful. They don't want, want to be careful for. We got it, did we? And tomorrow morning when the sun comes up, Roy's going to take it over to Silver City. Yes, sir. Silver City. He's going to put it in the bank, too. You know, that doodad's worth a lot of money. And ain't no place in this town strong enough to hold it. Yeah. Well, you broadcast about enough for one night, Gabby. You come along with me. Yeah, come on. I'll see you later, Okay, please. Gabby, you All come right, back. Yeah. Come on. You just sit here with Miss Williams, and the boys will sing you a lullaby. How do you do? Hello, Gabby. You want another seven? What's that? You're the prettiest girl in the whole world. Now, that's sweet. Now, you just be quiet a minute. Rope that mainsail, brand the deck, ride that gangplank. <laughs> I'm a seagoing cowboy, I ride the waves, I ride the rolling sea. Heave ho, me lad, heave ho, heave ho. I'm a rough riding pirate, I have me slaves, they all belong to me. Heave ho, me lad, heave ho, heave ho. We sold our saddles, we sold our spurs, we quit herding cattle, we hate the curse. Ho, me lad, heave ho, heave ho, heave ho, me lad. Billowy foam Where the dearest of mermaids play Where always is heard This encouraging word Holy land And all your dough to Davy Jones and lock them up below. Heave-ho, me lad, heave-ho, heave-ho. You can have all your broncos and blaster bones. I know where they can go. Heave-ho, me lad, heave-ho, heave-ho. The sage that's blooming, the cactus plants, all give me a pain in the seat of me pants. Ho, me lad, heave-ho, 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 me lad.
Gabby. We'd better get him back to Roy. Yeah, I want to see Roy. I'll take him over, Dan. Oh, I better go with you. Never mind, he'll be all right. Proud to go anywhere with you. Prettiest gal in the whole world. That's what she is. Yes, sir. Well, that's fine. We're going to get you in here and sit you down. How the work? Got the door. Did they go for it all right? Well. If there's anybody in Bear Valley that don't know you're riding to Silver City in the morning, <laughs> it ain't my fault. What is this, another gag? Is this another wild Indian game? Say, you must have been a pretty good drunk to fool her. Yeah, too good. Listen, did you really get the crest? Nope. We'll put out some bait, and maybe we'll have something in the trap tomorrow. You know, it's a funny thing, Roy. I got a headache. <laughs> Riding this way with a mob after him. LeBlanc. You stay here and keep quiet. No shooting unless I give the signal. Where's Marty? Out in the barn, I think. Set his horse is lame. Rogers, this man is... That's what I want to know. Who is he? I don't know, but he's dead. He must belong here. He was heading right straight to your ranch. I never saw him before. Oh, wait a minute. I'm wrong. I have seen him before. He's one of the men I saw the night Craig was killed. How'd he happen to come up here? I haven't the least idea. Unless he was heading for the same place he was heading for that night. That's logical, Roy. Not only logical, Sheriff, but it's true. If you have any doubts, Rogers, I'll be only too glad to help you clear him up. Well, not a doubt in the world about you, Mr. Courtney. I just couldn't figure out why he came here. Better take him with us, boys. We don't want to leave him on Mr. Courtney's hands. Would you care to use my phone? No, we better get on back to town. Well, any time you're going by, I'd be glad to have you stop off. Thanks. As soon as we get a little time, we may do just that. Goodbye. Go along. Our crap sure didn't get us very far. Didn't it? Sure not. We still don't know who the... Hey, you don't think Mr. Courtney was lying, do you? Gabby, a fine man like Mr. Courtney? I'm ashamed to hear you say that. <laughs> Traveling much too fast, 
People always searching something new. Seasons come and go. I'm content, I know. Anytime but I'm with you. Time doesn't have any meaning except in when you're away. Then each moment is like a now. Each hour is just like a day. But let the hands go round with their tick-tock sound. Never mind, we'll find a lot to do. Just forget the clock and the tick-tick-tock any time that I'm with you. You know, they sing this song very nicely south of the border, too. Well, here's a guitar. Give out to your... Nada me importa la vida si la de vivir sin ti. Nunca te olvidaré, mi amor, pues moriré por tu amor. Si tú me haces querer, yo te adoraré. Nunca, nunca te olvidaré. I'm sure glad to see you've got nothing trouble in your mind. I get all my best ideas when I'm singing. That's that darndest idea about suspecting Courtney. He's a nice guy. Got all the money he needs. Did you look at his checkbook? No. Roy, do you really think it was Courtney? Well, I don't know, but I'm not missing any bets. What is his new idea? You've heard that old saying about how the criminal always returns to the scene of the crime? Mm -hmm. We're going out there and see what happens. Well, what about me? Can I go? No, you better stay here and look after Gabby's shop. You can't tell. Somebody might bring that crest in and want to trade it for a cuckoo clock. <laughs> Very funny, Mr. Rogers. Be careful, will you, Roy? Don't worry. Gabby will take care of me. So you think Rogers is hep, huh? There's no doubt about it. Of course Rogers knows. Oh, if he does, why does he act so friendly? Because he has no proof. He's too smart to show his hand. By the way, Marty, where were you all morning? Well, I took a nap in the barn, that's all. Why? Sure you went out on some little venture of your own? Me? Well, you don't think I'd double-cross you, do you? Of course I don't think so. I know you would. So you think Rogers and his gang, they had the crest? Well, that's what we have to find out. We might as well have a showdown with Rogers right here now, before he gets anywhere with his suspicions. Burns, you and Larson go out and find Rogers and invite him here. Invite him? Don't be stupid. Bring him here. I put your horses in the barn. Thanks, Gabby. Boy, am I tired. Whew. Well, what next? Well, we haven't got the crest, and neither have they. Somebody's got to make the next move, so we'll wait here for it. Tom must have been sitting right about where you are when he was killed. <coughs> hmm. Clock stop. Might as well wind it. We haven't got anything else to do. Well, wind. Ought to be all right. It's a cavaco. Cavaco? What did you say? Cavaco. Cavaco? Yeah. Get, get it down here. What, what are you worrying about? What? Well, never mind. Just get it open. Oh, I've fixed more clocks and watches than you ever seen. Yeah, I know, but not one like this one, I hope. I'll get her fixed up in a jiffy. Let's see now. Huh. Roy. <laughs> well, start ticking, Gabby. This ain't no part of a clock. That's it, Gabby. We found it. All right. Rach. 
Well, we were expecting visitors, but I don't think we've had the pleasure of meeting you fellas. We can get a formal knockdown later. You're coming with us. Come on. Step on it. Set go. Mr. Rogers, I don't like operating this way any more than you like being here against your will. But up to now, we've been a counterpoint. We've been both looking for the same thing. I want to join forces to our mutual advantage. You mean you want me to help you peddle stolen jewelry? Well, it isn't merely jewelry. You know that. Or don't you? I'd like to hear more about it. All right, then I'll assume that you don't know the full value of the crest. Wealth, power, international importance. Come on, Rogers. Let's get our heads together. Where is it? Well, we don't know where it is any more than you do. Burns, exactly what is the conversation you overheard at the Craig Ranch? They said, we've got it, and a lot of excited talk about a clock. That the was... clock, that's it, Alberta, the clock on yes. the mantelpiece. Yes, the clock. You came back for one final look, and this whole fool stumbled on it. You're on the wrong track. I'm a clockmaker. We did. That's yes. just an accident, but you found it. You're a poor liar, Sheriff. Go over there and get that clock. Now, that's the way it is, Mr. Rogers. I'm afraid that your failure to cooperate with me will not entitle you to the share that I had in mind. I guess maybe I can struggle along somehow without it. I know we're on the right track, Alberti. I know it. back to Craig's ranch. You, kill that. Go ahead and keep an eye on you. Trading post? Yes. I started to go into Craig's office a while ago and I... Ellen! Ellen! You and me. Nothing doing. We're taking out the Courtney. Come on. Find Helen. She's 
somewhere in town, she may be in trouble. Well, what kind of trouble? What happened? I don't know, but find her. Hello. Get around the What's going on? What's happening? It's the going on here, anyway. together and follow me. I'll explain later. Hurry up. On your ponies, boys. We're going with Roy. Hurry. Coming back. Did you get it? Yeah, we got it. That's it, Alberti. That's it. Come on. Come on, boys. Inside. After Roy, there's a half a dozen guys in there that we've got to, shall I say, scalp? <laughs> That's for us. Say, my grandpa told me many a time about how they used to do it. Can we take over? Sure, but how? Watch us. Hey, that thing isn't loaded with blanks, is it? Oh, no. These are real. <laughs> okay. Just like old times, boys. Come on! Run right those windows. about this. I'll show you. You'll know sooner or later. It's a map of a rich deposit of pitch blends for which certain foreign countries would give everything they own. Pitch blends? Isn't that what uranium comes from? Yes, uranium, the atom bomb, power over life and death. And you're just a man to have that power. supposed to hold them up. Up. The wall of low down ornery no. You're up, Sheriff. You got your man.
I love the smell of bacon, coffee in the making. Take it from me, that's a cowboy's dream. Well, we're the one who 